Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to He Walks With Us Everywhere. I'm Tracy, and it is the 29th of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. We'll continue our daily reading, our daily word of encouragement with Brother Thomas Vincent. And today's reading is coming out of James 5 and verse 16. And the word of the Lord says this, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Hallelujah. And today's title is Conviction of Sin. If you would attain true love unto Jesus Christ, you must get conviction of sin and a sense of your need of Christ. The prevailing love and liking of sin is inconsistent with true love unto Jesus Christ. Such as love Christ do hate sin, and such as love sin have an enmity against Christ. While your hearts go after your covetousness and your voluptuousness, or are set upon any other wickedness, your hearts cannot be set upon Christ. Before you can love Christ, your hearts must be taken off from sin. Get therefore a conviction of sin as the greatest evil in the world. Be persuaded what an evil and a bitter thing it is to transgress God's law and thereby to affront the high majesty, the great king of glory. Look into the word and law of God and see what is there required and what is there forbidden. And then look back upon your lives or look into the register of your consciences that you may find out what your sins of omission and commission have been. Take a view of your transgressions of the law and of your disobedience also unto the gospel. And as you are guilty before God, so labor for a clear sight and deep sense of your own guilt. How you are under the curse for your disobedience, how you are liable to ruin and eternal destruction for your sins. Look upon sin as the most mischievous thing in the world. If there be any evil in any temporal calamities which ever did befall any of the children of men, yea, if there be any evil in future miseries, in the extremity and externity of hell's pangs and punishments, be persuaded that there is far more evil in sin which is the cause of all. Amen. Be persuaded of just how evil evil is. Be persuaded that it is the most evil and bitter thing to be at enmity with God. To be at enmity with Him is to be at war with Him. You want to be at war with God Almighty? This self-examination, this reflection, this introspection, the looking upon our own lives are we walking in obedience? Are we? Are we walking it out in spirit and truth? Really? Are we simply hearers of the word and not doers also? They're real questions and they're real tough, aren't they? And, and when we really, you know, pull back the curtain and begin to look soberly, clearly, in earnest with a love for God and all that he commands and all of his statutes, when we start really looking, I wonder how many will be ever more with the Lord on that day. He says many are called, but few are chosen. Are we striving to enter in at the narrow gate? Are we really striving? Because it's a work. It's a work. And it's not easy. I had a you know, a dear friend the other day just he's having a hard time with certain things and and letting go of the flesh and the desire to, you know, to do things in his flesh, to react, to act and react. But what gives God glory? Any one of us could act in our flesh or react to situations, any one of us, because we are all subject to these flesh, corrupted, sinful bodies. But if we know this, especially of ourselves, this is where the looking at within, the really taking a, a good, clear look at ourselves, if we know that we're prone to running off and 
reacting and acting in our flesh, and it often gets us into trouble, then does it glorify God more for us to do such things? Or does it glorify him more for us to patiently wait upon the Lord, to trust him? What can we learn? What can, what can we learn in this, in this waiting, in these times of trials or great difficulty even? We, we have an idea of waiting upon the Lord. And for us, we are so carnally minded, you know, and God forbid when we are. But we want it yesterday. We want it five minutes ago. We want it within the next three days or else I'm going to have to do something. Let me tell you that the, the I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he doesn't serve your timeline. He doesn't serve my timeline. He isn't put into that box like what Brother Brian last night was sharing on his testimony. Our God is so much bigger than that. And he will be defined only by who he is and what he chooses to do. So I think it's time for all of us to really take a step back. Take a step back. And, you know, we study to show ourselves approved. We we take time to look at the sin that we've committed and the things that we're doing that are creating enmity with our Heavenly Father. And we repent and we turn from them. You know, and I know another dear brother who's just coming under the gun right now. And let me just say something about all manners of our Christian walk. Until you, brother, sister, friend, until you have done research, like actually done research, which research doesn't mean listening to somebody else share their thoughts or their view or their take on something. Real research means you go and check out a book or, or borrow a book or find an article and you actually read for yourself. Until you've done that, until you've done the research and the digging into any matter to do with scripture. Don't judge somebody else for the research that they have done. We are all able to still learn. I hope, I pray, but there is not one of us who has everything always right all the time. That's a huge red flag. If you think anybody does, you could very well be guilty of idolatry. And I know that's hard to hear. We just, we, we think that we really admire the people around us and, you know, or this guy over here or this gal over there. We think it's just admiration because of, you know, a skill or a good teaching. Just be careful. Be careful. Examine. Examine yourselves. Idolaters won't enter in. The fearful won't enter in. Make sure that you love the truth more than you love the lie. Make sure that you're willing to see and hear and accept the truth no matter the cost, no matter how many of your own thoughts and your own ideas have to be whittled away. All of you, Father, less of me. All of you, none of me. You either want truth with all your being and are willing to lay aside and cast aside everything that you think you know in exchange for everything that our Father does know. How much are you willing? You know, I used to think that I had a clear understanding of certain things and until I realized I didn't. I realized that there is always much to learn, much to study out. And I had to start asking myself questions. Why do I believe this way? Do I believe because I've done any significant Berean study on it? No, most of it. I was just lazy. I just accepted what this person or that person said because I liked them. But I didn't study. I didn't open the word of God for myself and go and, and take a gander and go and, and dig into the research and the history and the historical documents left from people of faith before. Now I do. Praise the Lord. Now I study like that because I, I do. I have a, a desire for all things that are truthful, laying down everything that's a lie and everything that's maybe Maybe not a lie, bold face, but misguided at best. So today, let's all do that. Let's all examine everything and see how much of the thoughts that we have are from an actual examination. 
how much of the the thoughts that we carry and the understanding of different things that we have, how much of that is from our Father, and a study that we've done, you know, to search out a matter, to be Berean, as I hear so many saying, and how much of what we think we know, and think we understand, is simply the understanding of another. It's time for us to know. The Lord would have us study it out and learn and grow. The Lord gives wisdom unto the foolish things of this world. He confounds the wise and gives wisdom to the foolish, you know, those who seem to be dumb or slow or I don't know, but unwise in the world's estimation. So don't think for a second that because you're you, that the Lord can't drop just massive amounts of information upon you and give you such understanding that's beyond your years, that's beyond measure. He absolutely can. He can do all things, but you have to want it. I want wisdom. God, give us wisdom. I want understanding. God, give me understanding. I want clarity. Lord, take away any confusion and bring clarity in your word. So ultimately, it's up to each one of us to examine ourselves, to see if we be in the faith. And it's up to each one of us to be a Berean, to study out the very words that the Lord has given to us in the very word of God, right? Don't be confused. Don't be confused. Don't, don't for a second think that somebody else is experience or understanding or knowledge in any way can make up for your own examination and experience and knowledge. I can't. You can take nuggets from others. You can take nuggets from me, and I pray to God that you do. We learn of him. And Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty nine, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And in Psalm 119, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. You see, the Lord teaches us all the things that he would have us to know. We can learn of him directly. Praise the Lord. All right, y'all, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Abba, thank you for loving us like you do, Lord. Thank you for waking us up to a brand new day. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are Abba, Father, Teacher, Protector, Counselor. You are in all things and before all things and by all things. You have created everything, Lord. Nothing is you have not been a part of. Father, we praise your holy name this morning. We bless your holy name. You are Lord of Lords, magnificent, mighty, unchanging, infallible. You are faithful and true. You are the I am. We ask you, Lord, to be with us as we make our way throughout the day today. God, be above us, below us, and around us shield and defend and protect each one of us, Lord, with your heavenly holy angels, station ministering angels about us, Lord, this day, to go before us and to clear the way, to be in every corner of every room, in our homes, our places of business, in our vehicles, wherever we are, Lord, that they would indeed be with us. Lord, prepare the ways before us, make straight our paths, let no harm come unto us, Lord. And we ask for a hedge of protection, that wall of fire, holy fire, to be surrounding us, each of us, throughout the day. Lord, we ask for you to forgive each of us. Lord, forgive me for the sins I've committed against you in thought, in word, and in deed. And help me to be obedient unto you, to not have any enmity between you and me. And Lord, if there is Show me, O oh God, show me, I pray, that there would be no enmity between us, that I would have a clean conscience before you, 
and that I would be cleansed of all unrighteousness and unholiness and things detestable to you. Lord, help us to search out a matter. Help us to look into your word for ourselves and to pray and seek you for understanding and wisdom. And I do this morning, God, I ask for wisdom. Increase wisdom within us. Give us understanding, Lord. Help those of us who are so lowly, Lord, in mind and in stature to have such great understanding that could only be ascribed to you, Lord, and for your glory. We long to know your ways. We want to know the truth. Lord, forgive us this day for holding on to things in our own strength, for holding on to ideas or theology or counsel that we've taken as the truth or as gospel when we haven't studied it out for ourselves. Lord, help us to to search out a matter. Help us to be willing to truly go and examine things for ourselves because of our love for you and the desire to know the truth. Lord, we ask that you would bind every spiritual wickedness in heavenly places this day. Bind every sweet influence coming against us and our families. We ask for you to bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades, Lord, and whatever that would look like that would have any influence over our lives and our families' lives. Lord, we rebuke every spiritual wickedness. We rebuke every sweet influence in Jesus Christ's name. We say, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. Help us put on our full armor this day before we make our way into the thises and the thatses of the day. Help us to sure up our armor, to gird up our strength, to put on those full helmets of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, to gird our loins with truth, to put on the breastplate of righteousness, to have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and the shield of faith above all things. May that shield just be ever, ever more powerful each and every day. May our shield of faith just get bigger and help us, Lord, to trust in you. Shut our feet with that preparation of the gospel of peace. Help us this day to do your will. We pray thy will be done. And let us not run in our own strength, but help us to wait upon you all the day long. I love you, Lord. I love you with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I ask you this day to help folks who are struggling physically, whatever those physical needs are, Lord. Please help to give them comfort with whatever they're walking through, ease the pains that they have, and guide them into making the best choices, choices that would please you, Lord. We pray together and ask that our flight be not in winter, nor on the Sabbath day, and we ask for you to come. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Announcements, announcements. Sunday, this coming Sunday, we'll be doing a live for our daily reading and prayer time. So this Sunday, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 Pacific, and I hope to see all of y'all over there for that. Uh, Last night, the testimony with Brother Brian I hope that y'all were able to catch that. And if you weren't, give it a listen. Very moving and humbling and, you know, just so awesome to get to hear our brothers and sisters' stories of what the Lord has done in their lives. So thanks again to all of you who were there and, and gave that a listen. And thank you for sharing things out, all of you. So uh, keep me in prayer. I've got to go here pretty soon, actually, and get some stuff done today with my teeth. And so please ask the Lord to to make everything go smoothly and to be with me. So just so y'all know, the next two days, I have gone ahead and pre-recorded Thursday and Friday's reading, just in case. I don't know how how my mouth's going to be and and speaking and whatnot. So I will be back here with y'all, Lord willing, this coming Sunday. So I love each of you and I do pray you have a wonderful day. Stay in the Lord. Stay focused, focus, focus, focus on Him. But remember, while it's great to glean from others and to to get nuggets of truth, the most beautiful study of all 
is the one that we do individually with our Heavenly Father. It is the best, the best of the best of the best. So get in the Word today. Read, study to show yourself approved. It's a command. All right. I love y'all. And Lord willing, I will see y'all here tomorrow.